As manufacturers, we're all saying, well, maybe we can harmonize a few things between manufacturers. You know, maybe there's a way of doing an XY. Maybe if we define where our color points are in a, in a CIE color space, we can all hit the same color points. Yeah, but, you know, these are all the same color points that I'm illustrating there, but the spectrum was different. So, yes, you'll be able to line it up mathematically using a color meter. But if you see that the spectrum is going to dif be different, you can expect to see some challenges as you move forward. Color space such as 709, 2020, these all define their, their uh, values in either values of 100 or in equal parts of 255. So that white spot is your D65, your daylight 6500 Kelvin as a white point. And from there, as you go off 255 steps on your dimmer, uh, you'll get to your green, to your red, and your blue. So there are apps, which you may be familiar with, Show Tool Swatch. Uh, it's a great little app. It's basically a, uh, it gives you the ability to take color values, such as uh, RGB, and input those into your device. Now, you've got to remember, these are uh, Rec. 709. And unless a manufacturer says, my instrument is set to 709, a lot of manufacturers just go with their native gamut, which is whatever is determined by their red, green, blue points. Um, and so it may not be an absolute match. So this is where the color matching between manufacturers gets, it gets interesting because the same RGB values entered into different manufacturers is going to render out differently. So even a color point that falls outside, it's still going to be reproduced within this uh, within this program at 709, but it'll be desaturated, but it'll fall on that hue angle where it crosses into the gamut. Uh, Lee gels have a similar uh, app where you can actually define XY coordinates, and again, our instruments will actually go into that and, sh and give you an XY coordinate, and you should be able to match it up. Now, it's independent of gamut because it takes into account the entire CIE color space. So in, in many respects, XY, is a, is a good way of trying to get to certain points, but you still need to be aware of what the actual spectral distribution is to, to make sure that they're all going to match up. So that's a, sort of a display on what ours looks like. Uh, it's very straightforward and simple. You simply put in the data that uh, the, the field outputs. Uh, ESTA, the Entertainment Services and Technology Association, also known as Plaza in the UK, they're suggesting that we as manufacturers adopt the Kodak Pro, uh, Pro Photo Color Space uh, system. It's a rather large gamut. The only thing that's awkward is that it uses a, uh, a white point that's tungsten. All the gamuts have a native white point that's daylight. And when we asked them, why did you choose this? And I went, I don't know, just it seemed like a, nobody said anything about it. So. Said, well, okay, we're saying something about it. So we need to go back to what the original gamut was, D65. This way, it's, it's, a, you know, it's across the board. All the gamuts share the same white point. All they do is expand it fr from there. So I think that's going to happen. Uh, they're all, you know, ESTA is part of uh, the, uh, the technology group now at the ASC as well. And so I think we're going to be, th these are all things that are in flux right now. But what it uh, is calling for, I think we're going to be moving more and more to uh, mapping in XY, uh, because it's independent of the gamut as well. But later on, you still, between manufacturers, want to define a gamut. So this is where we're getting to the point where we, th we really feel that uh, we need to be able to give that kind of uh, selection. So in our case, REC 709, P3, uh, and REC 2020, including ESTA. So once those are selected in the software, all the color points map within that gamut. And if you take that profile to a board, and the other manufacturers are also in the same gamut, and their profile goes to the board, when a board op dials up a Kelvin temperature, the likelihood of them being close together is going to be much higher than what we currently have. Same with colors. 
likelihood of them getting closer together is going to be better. You may see slight desaturation levels. So we're hoping that XY is going to give us a little more uh, color matching between manufacturers, but we also know that there's still a lot to do with the, the overall spectrum. So one of the things that we've done is we've tried to go ahead and we'll, we'll put in, we call them camera LUTs, but they're really profiles. Uh, you can pick the Alexa, the Venice, or the DXL, the Vericam. And once you put that in, then essentially we're trying to give you a neutral white starting point. So we take that part of the equation out of it so you don't have to at least worry about, am I, is my skin tone going to be right? Uh, we had jo uh, John Schwartzman, ASC, do a picture up in, in uh, the UK and in, in London. It's a Christmas story coming out, coming to a theater near you. Uh, and there they went ahead and they really put it through its, through its paces. So they're shooting on the uh, Panavision DXL. Uh, everything around the actors was our freestyle systems, harmonized to the camera. Ex outside the set, uh, backings were done with uh, sky panels. Sky, ca sky panels were brought in through windows, through shears and things. So wherever there wasn't a direct influence on the skin tone, that was in the background. It was not, it, it, it was not an issue. Uh, but they went with the original DI. There wasn't a lot of tweaking. And the colorist just said, what'd you guys do? What? You're, I was expecting to do a lot more. Uh, and he'd played with it, and John came back and said, no, just go back to the original DI. It's, that's exactly what we wanted. So we know that the damn thing works. And so now it's a matter of you know, having the luxury of time to do the camera test ahead of time to make sure that whatever workflow you're choosing as a cinematographer to work in, that you have the ability to at least test for these uh, these features and make sure that they work within the context of the way you're working. Uh, XY color matching, think it'll work. RGB, uh, that's another way of, of blending colors and hopefully that'll, if we all harmonize on gamut, that should, should work out. So really, summarizing this, color indexes provide some information but not enough a actionable data. That's really unfortunate. We need to understand these differences in gamut and how we want to work in post, because we now have the ability to actually set that in the instrument. We need to be aware of what is defined as white Calvin. Every manufacturer says, yes, well, of course we do a full spectrum white. You gotta take a look at it, you gotta do the test. Uh, a handheld spectrometer will show you what that spectrum is, you'll be able to compare it to another manufacturer, and then test for it. XY is maybe a step in the right direction, but you're still going to need some correction uh, necessary. Common X, Y, and Calvin doesn't necessarily ensure harmonization. Again, it, it's unfortunate to have to be vague about these things, but that's just the nature of the technology that we're in right now. There are all these variances, and you sort of have to try to weasel your way through it. LEDs fixture gamut determines the degree of color saturation it can produce. So if it's a very large gamut, or if it's got multiple color points that pushes it out to the outside uh, extremities of the CIE color chart, you may see those colors. But again, you may lose those colors as well, depending on if you're in 709, you can go to all the trouble of showing your director all these wonderful colors, and it goes into 709, none of those colors are there. They're all desaturated. So do you want to set up a false expectation, or do you want to just show them what you're actually going to work with? It, it's a political decision. And the big question then is later on, if this goes into the next, say, 20 years from now, you want to retime the film, are you going to go back to the 709 data that you had? Or as a cinematographer or the author of the image, are you going to say, whoa, I can actually go much broader now, but now it's a different picture. So the, those are creative and almost political issues that have to be resolved, because you now have this ability, or in the wrong hands, of someone who's not associated with the film at all, and the film is supposed to be a low-key, low-saturated production, and now suddenly it goes technicolor, and you go, wow, you know, it completely distorts the original intent of the cinematographer. So those are some of the areas of, of concern that we have. You know, in the old days, they were called lamp operators for a reason. You needed to know how to operate a lamp. Carbon arcs was a skill set that had to be learned, and we've come full circle. We need lamp operators. We need people who actually understand what is gamut. We need to have people who understand what is spectrum. Because when a cinematographer is going, trying to solve problems, as a lamp operator, you may have the answer once you understand what the issue is. So 
I went through a film school education, but I, was, I came out of the photochemical world. That was 32 years ago, 34, 30, well, 40 years ago. Um, but it set me up to want, having to think about what the film is seeing, and now we have to understand what is the camera seeing. And the fact that we have these two variables now, a light source that has color signs and a camera that's got color signs, that's a, that's a challenging act. And so that's where a lot more testing has to come in. And I, it, it, again, as, this, as lamp operators, the more you understand of what is tunable, the easier it is going to be to address the issues with the cinematographer who's looking at it going, the hell kind of instrument you bring me here? You can't do this and you can't do that. He said, you trust me, watch. And then you can go in and correct it. So it's really, really important. So we're actually running workshops uh, with, uh, in Los Angeles. We did this and we also did it in New York uh, where we actually go in and train the technicians on what these computers are now capable of doing. So it's no longer a switch on off and place the lamp. No, now you're actually operating this fixture way beyond what you've ever done before. So having this, this kind of knowledge, I think, is going to be very important. So just as Rembrandt and Vermeer chose their pigments carefully, today's cinematographers have to choose their spectral palettes just as carefully. When you think about Rembrandt, I mean, he worked with like seven pigments, maybe, something like that. He was very particular. You can identify a Rembrandt just by analyzing the pigments. And when you think about that time in history in Amsterdam, there were a lot of people running around making pigment. And these guys were very particular because they were such honed in artists. They knew what they could rely on and they didn't just nilly willy mix, mix stuff together. Good broad spectrum white light goes a long way in solving color rendering. Think of your lighting element, your lighting instrument as a white light generator and also think of it as a device that can generate colors. And you have to sort of decide, am I choosing this because of its capability of producing the white that I need? Or am I trying to do something that's very colorful now because there are some great instruments that will hit color points but really not do well in white? So, and there's, there's cost involved in all these things. So if you want to do one that does everything, you can expect to be paying the higher price on these things as well. But there are a lot of choices now, from being five manufacturers for lighting instruments, we're upwards of 200, and the qualities, quality ranges all over. So as a cinematographer, you're seeing all these brushes that are so exciting, you go, that's a great size, I could use it for this and this and for this task, but remember, each one has its own embedded pigment. And unless you test for it, that's what's gonna bite you in the ass in production and sitting there in post going, the hell was, where, where did that come from? So, these are the things we need to keep in mind. So workflow gamut is very important because it's going to influence your, your limitation. And when mixing different types of white light for manufacturers, we really need to take the time. And I don't know, at the ASC I was talking about this and they're saying, you know, you're preaching to the choir. You all know this. We need to bring the producers on board because they have no appreciation for the complexity of what the current cinematographer has to work with compared to in the past. It's far more complex. And you can say, well, you know, we'll fix it in post. You can, and that is a budget line in and of itself. And it's also where you have the most compromise then. Because once it's committed, there's nothing more you can do. Test, test, test your choice of camera or your lights. Fixtures, color science is the 21st century pigment. Fixtures are the brushes. Choose your pigment wisely or suffer the consequences when color grading. <laughs>